everybody. It's time for another live stream. This time we'll be discussing this figure that I actually shot and presented on Locals.com like three weeks ago now. Uh, Tigatron. I didn't give it that treatment because I know I got to get that. It's a borrowed figure, so I had to get it back right away. So I didn't want to have the Locals delay associated with it. Um, so now this figure has arrived on YouTube, and today's the day to discuss it. By the way, if you're curious, uh, you get this figure on Locals.com now, and we'll be presenting that on YouTube on Sunday and discussing it next Wednesday. I'm still not sure what I'm shooting this weekend, but that is your answer as to what you'll be seeing this weekend if you if you don't get greedy and spend you, spend you two bucks to support me at Locals and see a video early. Won't that be fun? Won't that be something no one's done? So let's discuss this Binal Tech. It was a cool cool line of figures at the time. Um, I mean, this came out in the era that we're, we were getting things like the, uh, I guess, the Armada trilogy. Armada, Energon, Unicron back then. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, these were kind of like masterpiece figures before there were masterpiece figures, and it's... They're very interesting. They, uh, they're they very die-cast, at least the Japanese vinyl tech ones were. I've got a few towards the end of the line that didn't actually come out in the die-cast form that I know of, and I ended up with the plastic, like Ravage. But uh, decent figure. It's got nice paint apps. It's, uh, it's the construction of the car parts are all metal. So it's very die-cast, and that means it's actually kind of unstable because of that. Uh, it doesn't have great articulation, like there's no mid-bicep swivel at all. Uh, there's no mid-thigh swivel. You get what you get with the ball joints at the hips. Um, it, I mean, I guess this is supposed to be the knee, but I mean, it's not very posable. Uh, you kind of stand it there. But what it did do is it made an excellent car. So uh, without too much further ado, let's turn it into a car. Uh, the engine all these folds up, so the engine, the gun turns into an engine. Uh, this guy's got kind of like the classic sort of flap, which covers up where the head goes through. Kind of lazy. There's some design elements. The, the transformation design on this has some interesting things, but for the most part, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Nothing too exciting. But well, this is just kind of floppy. That was fun to manage during the shoot. Um, so we unsnap the front. We got to make sure we're holding onto the sides because there's like a part there that you know pops loose. That's not what we're trying to pop loose. We're trying to pop loose the front. And that's just uh, it's snapping onto these parts here, which are plastic, and this snaps onto that. Uh, so we start to lift that up. You have to kind of dance the, everything around a little bit. So, you know, this starts to close and this starts to close and you can kind of get that going. Uh, we bring the steering wheel up into position because it was kind of tucked away. Uh, then the head, uh, you want to flip this up. So he's like that. The arms can be a little bit tricky. We'll go over that right now. Fortunately, this is on a C joint, so it's not like broken. It just pops off sometimes. Uh, so the arms, we flip them over like this, and you have to get, and let's just see if we can put, <laughs> it's funny, I got, um, uh, what's his name, KFC Toys Ditka, thinking I was going to shoot that, I might yet, someday, it's, it's not a great figure, that Ditka, but it was on sale, but reminiscent of that, um, I was watching, I was watching, uh, uh, I, I won't name names, but I was watching a fairly famous, you know, Transformer reviewer. So I was trying to find out how Ditka transformed. And I mean, this review video for Ditka, he did the classic, all right, now you got to make sure that this goes like this. And then you move this over here like this. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the video. This is the one. This is like the quintessential, you wandered out of frame. Anyway, 
So without wandering out of frame, let me show you the trick with the arm. So there's the arm in its neutral position. So you bring this down and you need to get this past here. And you got a little bit of give here because this is like the steering joint. So you got to get it past there. And now you're ready to finish turning the arm around. So your goal is to end up like this. Uh, I don't tend to do anything in particular with the hand. I had someone ask about that and it's like I, I wasn't aware of the engine not staying in. Someone was like, how do you get the engine to stay in? I'm like, you peg it in? I don't know. We'll go over that in a second. So when we get this uh, loaded in, we'll just move this sliding thing. This is to keep the wheel steering together, which is, it's an interesting feature, but maybe not necessarily fully formed. We're just going to pull that up a little bit so we have some clearance. What I want to do is get this wheel kind of angled in here. Uh, let's see if we can show where it is at the moment. You see, this is one of the, this is the where the, the magnet is. That's the little hinge that holds the magnet part so that it's angled in like that at the moment. And then we're rotating the arm in and then we're flipping this up. And so now it's in that position. Okay, it's, it's kind of tricky. It's like a bit of a puzzle. Uh, I like to go ahead and move this over and, and this is where it's supposed to connect. So there's a magnet and then there's metal and it kind of moves that, but there's so much give at this end, you can see how easily it slips. Uh, there's so much give at that end, and then there's so much give at the other end that the wheels almost don't really even <laughs> move together. It's, it's not perfect. So again, we're flipping this around, and then we're getting that past there so it's on the other side, and then we can fit it in. We're just trying to aim that piece down at first so we can fold all this up, and then as we rotate this up, it just needs to get past this uh, piece so you can put it on top. And you know, they, they turn together, they do. They are what they are. All right. <clears throat> uh, one of my favorite parts of this transformation is how they reuse the like the floorboards of the car because they got to create it like a big empty space inside the car. And I really like how they use the floorboards to um, create like the belly the abs and the obliques for the car seats. That's that's one of my favorite features of this design. This is a inspired. It helps to kind of walk this in. I mean, you can snap it past, but why do it? Um, so you can kind of unfold this as you get it into that position there. Because you're just trying to get it under. I'll, I'll refold it a little bit. But you're just trying to get it under that tab because this is all. This is metal. I think. Metal test. My secret metal test. I don't know. They, they feel plastic. But so that all goes like that. Then you do a waist rotation and you're you're just kind of folding the legs at the same time that you lift up that crotch piece. So you're trying to get here. Uh, this gets in the way constantly. You can just kind of perch it there for a minute. Uh, we're going to tackle the legs. So they fold down. There's a hinge. How do I describe it? There's a hinge here. And there's a hinge here, and then there's like the knee knee joint. Um, but you're trying to you just open the doors, by the way. <laughs> we'll do some other things first too. Let's uh let's put the toe away, and then you got to make sure that you put away this like heel spur that helps him stand a little more stably, a little more stably, not terribly more. But we're just doing that. So we're trying to get, this just kind of slides and, and, and floats around, it's on a little slider there. But we're trying to get the, the leg to go down and then back up again. So we're folding the knee backwards um, and the, everything else kind of lays flat. Uh, the goal is to compress it, so you're, you're, you're getting everything lined up. Your goal is to, what is flying off of this thing? Another door, we'll get back to that. So you're trying to get this to go in. There's a little bit of a slot there, and there's a tab. And then there's another tab that crisscrosses and goes over. So you're trying to clamp, and that is plastic. They wouldn't clamp die cast like that. So that's that. I'll keep the seats down for a minute for my own reasons. But that's your goal. You're trying to get it to line up like that. So we'll do the other one. 
So we're folding that one joint. Just helps to have the doors open actually, so we'll just get those pre-opened. And then you're just folding the knee backwards and you're kind of compressing the leg until everything lines up. So that lines up, the legs pegged together. Make sure the trunk halves are pegging together successfully. There we go. Make sure the windows are slid all the way back. And if everything's aligned properly, then with the back doors open, you can use that area to stick in your fingers and tab those tabs so you snug in the roof line. And it'll kind of pull these forward. They really do have to be further back in order for the doors to close. So everything gets starts to line up as you do that. But we'll close the back doors. It does have operating back doors. Um, the seat somehow managed to get caught under the steering wheel, which is a real treat. Thank you. Not something I've ever seen with this before, but... It's a live video, so all kinds of weird shit's gonna happen. Fold this in. Take everything down. And then the engine, the engine's a little bit of a puzzle because it's got, basically it's got like a peg here. And they put a peg on the other side, I guess, for the sake of symmetry. But there's a hole in the arm there. There's one on the other side, so I suppose you could flip this either way. You could flip it this way. I've always tended to put it in this way, whatever. Someone was talking about like having the hands out of the way or whatever. The hands are just in the robot position. It doesn't matter. Uh, we squeeze this in, and then we have you have to kind of. It tends to fall before the thing, but it tabs in. It it, it stays there as far as I'm concerned. I mean, uh, the hands aren't really in the way of it. It's hard to it's hard to spot it with the camera, but the hands are. Well, there's the hands. I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with it. It stays in. That's not sitting right for some reason. I think there's one hand is actually twisted. Let's see if we can get them. I'm just straightening them back out in robot position. Yeah. So there you go. It's a die cast car. Uh, it's very sort of masterpiece, especially for its time. Nothing else was like this. Uh, it actually has rubber tires, real rubber tires. And it's, uh, you know, it has doors that open. It doesn't really have a back seat. There's a, there's a, thank you. There's a figure that comes out later that actually like has a full back seat that turns into jazz. We'll get to that eventually. But um, I don't know. It's pretty neat. There was two versions of this made. One was the seven car for the uh, Subaru WRX uh, rally team. Uh, this one's Solberg and Mills. Um, and the other one was eight. And I forget the names, of course, but I just happened to get the seven. Um, pretty dope. It's got the Subaru livery on it. Uh, it's a very smokescreeny choice, I think. They made a good choice with that one. And... Uh, there we are. Let's uh, let's do a little commentary catch up. Joseph Monroy says the vinyl texts were awesome. I have most of them. Never got the recolored ones. Yeah, I don't have a lot of recolors. But do you have all the molds? Mirage is a great mold. I have Mirage, and I also have the SDCC like exclusive um, Rodimus or Hot Rod or whatever. Um, that one was really dope because it was really well painted. Um, but I love that car, that uh, Ford GT. Uh, Ford GT. Um, it's a sweet car, and uh, they did a pretty good job with the robot. My favorite robot in the entire series is the one that uh, is Wind Charger or Deceptive Charge, but it's a Honda S2000 car. Uh, I think that robot mode really came off nice, really nice. That's my favorite one for robot mode. Hello, I came to see how you do your animations. I think. Well, I mean, I use a program called Dragon Frame to capture the animation. And so Dragon Frame allows you to see a ghostly image of the previous picture you took so that when you move apart, you know, some small amount, if the rest of it moves, you can tell by the ghostly picture how to pull it back into position and, and keep everything. Because my goal is to isolate the movement. I don't want to see, you don't want to see like there's people that do stop motion animations where the whole car transforms at once because they're trying to get that effect. But I'm trying to demonstrate or reveal or catalog, chronicle, document 
the uh, the movements it takes to transform it. Some things are harder than others. Obviously, this thing's pretty simple, except the arm bit. Um, but then I don't have to go back and look at the instructions again. And I don't have to peer at internet videos where they wander out of frame and where I have to skip all the parts where they're talking about the accessories and crap. Um, I can just watch a nice clean video that shows the steps for transforming it from either mode to either mode. And you guys get to also see it, but I'm really just kind of doing it for myself, let's be honest. But I take all the pictures and then I put the pictures into a program called um, Premiere Pro by Adobe. And uh, it's like a video editor, but I just, I set all the pictures to one frame wide and then I have a set of rules that I follow, like a procedure, like a procedure I follow. Like if I have one frame, I stretch it out to a quarter second, a six frame stretch. Uh, if I have two frames of a movement, then I'll do like a three and a three. I'll, I'll put them together. I'll I'll nest them and then stretch that out to six. So I have a bunch of rules I follow. You could probably figure them out. Um, and then I uh, put music on the, it, you know, it's, it's all a function of using the video editing software. So, but there's lots of stuff that's turnkey. You can get stop motion programs. Some of my earliest stop motions that I never put on YouTube were experimenting with uh, free stop motion programs that you can get on your cell phone. So you can, you can get one of those. I'd highly re recommend getting like a cell phone tripod so you can hold your phone still and re remove that variable from the equation. Uh, I spend a lot of uh, a lot of the money that I've spent on my equipment has centered around um, being able to move the camera in a precise and controlled way because I like to be able to do the camera moves. But starting out, you just want to get like a cell phone tripod and then you just you know. All of those basic cell phone programs have uh, onions, what's called onion skinning, where you can see a ghost of the previous image for alignment reasons. But that, in a nutshell, is how I do that. Uh, hey, Pack, P-A-K. Vinyls and alts are awesome. They are indeed. They were very awesome back in the day. You can imagine when you know we're in the middle of like Energon, something like this coming out. It was like whoa. You know, it was like. A real early attempt at like a full-on masterpiece style figure and it has an interior which frankly I think you get a better robot if you don't worry about having an interior but uh, I mean look at uh, DX9's Lahir which was the the last night version of Hot Rod turned into a Lamborghini Aventador that DX9 Lahir figure one of my favorite videos one of my favorite figures um, it's in my top 20 if you look at my playlist. It's like near the top of the top 20 that playlist that I put together. But um, that that car has an interior. I mean, that car is in the spirit of vinyl tech. It has a two-seat interior just like an Aventador would have. It doesn't have like a really finished interior, but this one didn't either. I mean, it's not, well, I don't know. This one does have a console and you can see like a stick shift. So, I mean, they spent a little time thinking about the interior, but it's not super fancy. But I don't know, man. That Lahir really captures the spirit of vinyl tech because it actually had an interior. Um, you don't get many vehicles outside of vinyl tech and, um, of course, the Human Alliance figures that came out in the movie line. Those were decent. But they were always hampered by having to create a void in an interior. You couldn't pack any robot parts into that interior you, if you're trying to make an interior. Uh, so with the exception of something like DX9 here, which brilliantly pulled the whole thing off, um, most of the time, if you're trying to make an interior, you're kind of compromising the robot mode. I mean, you know, the vehicle mode is splendid, but the robot mode ends up being a little weird. And like I said, these guys tended to have pretty poor articulation. They would turn into a robot, but you could pretty much just stand the robot and have anything else to do with it. Oh yeah, with the modern engineering and the computer-aided design, and you know, even the even the Earthrise figures are very precisely designed. Um, the plastic they're made out of can be distorted sometimes from the mold. So, like I noticed, my um, recently picked up uh, um, what's his name, Runabout, the black version of Runamuck, the two flip changers or whatever. Um, he's his his tabs don't quite line up because I think uh, they ended up distorting something on the way, but they're still pretty like the, everything's, you can see the engineering was planned out. Uh, 
Toy World does some fairly fancy engineering, for example, but they kind of skip a few steps because you end up with some really severe um, clearance issues with Toy World uh, figures generally. Like there's, you know, the smaller the figure, the more managed it is, but like the that uh, big Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie they recently did, that I did a video on, uh, I own it. It's, um, it's, the clearances are real demanding like you you have to do some things like exactly in the right order which i guess is the point of my channel but um toy world's kind of lacking something takara uh people complain about sometimes their materials but their designs are really good um you know like hound people complained about materials or stress marks i never had a problem with mine um, but hound was a brilliantly designed figure people complain about mp44 that i think that had a really interesting design and everything there's no clearance issues. Everything fits. You do have to do things in the right order, but you, you never end up with parts scraping past other parts unnecessarily. You can avoid all that. Generally, you can with Takara. Um, but yeah, with the modern design work, I mean, uh, I think DX9 Hero is like an example of what could be done to do... I mean, Lahiro's an alternator. It's a vinyl tech. It's, you know, uh, it's human alliance. It has an interior. Uh, very, very wonderful figure. So they could definitely have highly articulated, very nice looking, uh, complex robots with complex transformations. And when it's in car mode, it could have an interior and it could have seats and a steering wheel. They could totally do that today and they do a much better job than they did back then. But back then, that was the best, that was the best thing you could get. It was, you know, big die cast 124 scale car with an interior and it turns into a robot. I'm actually keeping them in uh, car mode because the, I, I keep the recolors in robot mode because the car mode is really the main thing about this line. Uh, you could have seen on my Instagram, I took a uh, Lambor, you know, the, it's a Dodge Viper. It's the second figure in this line. Dodge Viper turns into Sideswipe, but they call it Lambor because it's Takara. Um, it's not even a Lamborghini. It's just called Lambor. I guess they're just following the character name. But I was playing with that today. It's. I was also playing with the. Uh, I've been playing with the tablet that turns into a robot. It was like a, one of the convention exclusives. It turns into some Chinese. It's a, it's actual like it's not just a random tablet. It's like a Chinese tablet of some sort. Um, that's fun. I think I am probably going to shoot that this weekend. But you won't see it again. You're going to see. You'll see this guy this weekend on YouTube. But you can see him right now, this minute, if you go to uh, plsdrew.locals.com. Someday I'm going to make enough money that I'm going to be able to get a uh, motion control rig for my camera. But those are like ten or twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars, and I can't deal with it. But imagine if you could control the camera with a computer control, you could like the movements could be perfect. You know, I could say, oh, I'm going to open this door. And then I want to swing around to the back. And so just have the turntable on a motor. And so the turntable would turn around in a very precise way. And they can't, you could, you could line up the camera and you could get everything set. This is my fantasy. Get everything set and then rewind it. Like have it go back to where it was. So now you've got the path set. And then, uh, and then it reproduces the movement, but one frame at a time. So it reproduces this and then moves the camera up a little bit maybe, and then takes a picture. And then it moves the turntable a little bit more and lifts the camera up a little bit more and it takes a picture. And the thing is, you don't have to do that like in equal movements. So you could have it just move very precisely if there's like 16 steps, it would just move 1 16th of the way on each step and the camera would lift up 1 16th of the way to its final destination. But you can also what's do, what's called uh, like beziers, uh, where it, the simple explanation is I'm t I'm talking about where you you rotate a little bit at the beginning of the movement, and then you rotate a little bit more, and then you rotate a lot, and then a lot, and then a lot, and then a little, and then a little, and a little. So it has a soft start and a start soft finish when you play it back. Um, but with a motion control rig, I can do that with like a spreadsheet that I made that helps me calculate those movements, but you know, the, it's not entirely precise. So with a real MoCo rig, you could have just amazing camera moves. And someday, someday maybe I'll make enough money off of this hobby to do that.
But in the meantime, the camera moves are as good as I can make them by hand. And I've gotten pretty good at it, but it's not perfect. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a DX9 here that was like oversized to 124, like actual alternator scale? I, I'd be in favor of that. I love that design. It would be awesome to have it bigger. But it's such a beautifully painted uh, figure, and that's one of the best figures there is. I mean, if you don't like movie, the movie aesthetic, then maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's not for your collection. But if you don't have a DX9 here, you're missing out because it's just a real pleasure real pleasure to transform that thing and to look at both modes and pose it it's just it's it's a exemplary figure it's perfect anyway i've prattled on long enough if any of you guys have any final questions i only had two viewers so i guess i've had up to eight at one point but most of them dropped off they got bored i don't blame them i'm boring But if anyone has any final questions, then here's your opportunity. Otherwise, I'll be signing off momentarily. I bought this little arm, but I haven't actually used it. I've got another arm downstairs that's got a bigger base plate. But it looks like it could be useful. It's got a little alligator clip at the end, so I could grab a figure with it. It's not entirely tight either. I think it's meant for much lighter things than any of the robots I'd be doing. All right, gang. I can see we're out of steam. Thanks for attending. I reviewed it. You have the official stop motion the hands-on notes and so I can use either video in the future to remember how to transform this without having to figure it out and you can too if you want uh, everyone have a good evening hope you had a good Thanksgiving if you do that um, looking forward to a good Christmas maybe put in the comments what what you would want what, what you think you might get for Christmas in the transformer world um, and we'll talk next week about uh, Cliff Jumper, Transformers Prime First Edition Cliff Jumper, uh, which you can see now on plstrue.locals.com for the low, low price of $2. And uh, you'll see it next week on YouTube. So, uh, good night and good weekend. See you later. <laughs> I never know what to say. <laughs> I'm going to go.